Next step is to wire the wings into our form. If you recall during the form prep lesson, we drilled two holes right here, right behind the shoulders. There are little spots on the form. You could call them dummy marks where you can drill those in. Basically anywhere right behind the shoulders is fine. Also notice I have gloves on. I'm going to be having gloves on during the entire mounting process. Not that necessarily you would need to have gloves on when you're handling the turkey or any part of the form at this point, but it's a good way to help keep things clean. If I would get anything on my fingers, whether it's silicone or latex caulking or anything else, I can see that I have it on there and I can quick change my glove and keep moving. It's also a way to help keep the feathers clean. Also, the workbench has been washed. I keep washing it throughout the entire process. If I have the bird laying on my workbench, I want to make sure there's nothing on my workbench that could get on the feathers. At this point, we don't want anything on those feathers. If you get it on there now, you'd have to rewash the bird, which wouldn't be a good thing. I'm going to start out by running it in on my left side. The first one, just to this point, you have to put them in together. You can't do one and then the other. Okay, you can see we both have them started. Let the form drop down to those cut off humerus bones. We'll start with the camera side. You want to make sure you're not locking any skin or pinching any skin in anywhere when you're putting this on. So you make sure this area is clear. Make sure nothing's folded up on the humerus bone. I like to make sure the bone is up tight against that shoulder area. Okay. Got my lineman's pliers. I'm going to make a bend on my soft black wire like that. I'm going to grab right at the base where it's coming out of the form. I'm going to pull and bend down. What that's doing is that's forcing that humerus bone against our form. That's important. You want that to be the same on both sides so we have correct symmetry. And I just bend my wire down, push it into the form, pound it in. These are the staples we'd made earlier, which is excess from our wing wires. I'm going to use that. Give us a little bit more security to make sure it doesn't move. Okay, now we'll repeat that process on this side. You can't see what I'm doing, but it's the same thing. I have a little bit more wire here than I need. Just gonna cut that off with my lineman's pliers. And same thing again. Bend it over, grab at the base, bend and pull down, push that into place. Double check everything, make sure it's the same on both sides, put our staple in, okay. the next step is very important, we're going to bend the wings out. Now this does two things, one it gives us some stability when we're sewing up the rest of the skin on the form, but it also locks these wires in as we bend it it locks these things down so it's not moving anymore. We make sure that our neck is again in this bag during the rest of this process. And we can proceed with sewing up the rest of the bird. Now we're ready to bring the rest of our skin around our form. Start by grabbing it by the keel skin or the belly skin. And we're just pulling it up and around. And grab both of the legs and just start aligning those. Then I angle my entire form up like this. Grab this pocket from underneath, just pull it up and forward. If you have a correct fitting form, this should be an easy process. If you're struggling to pull this skin over the top of this breast area, your form is too big. At this point, you're going to have to live with it and just use it. But in the future, you'll know I should have dropped down a form size. You also see we have plenty of extra skin moving here, so we're in good shape. We have nice skin to work with. You don't want to necessarily pull this down too far this way. 
you want to make sure you have extra skin moving up here to work with. This can come up to meet it. We grab both our legs again. We just make sure that they are coming together correctly and lining up and we can start sewing up. Okay, we're ready to start sewing up the leg. If you remember, we case skinned out the turkey. So we need to reattach it the same way we skinned it. To do that, I'm just taking a needle and my heavy duty black thread and I'm starting it on one side of the drumstick. I'm going on the top side, just pushing it through and pulling my string all the way through and I'm doing two half knots just to finish that off. Cut off the tag end. Okay, so this is where we're at. We're gonna take our thread, run it through the center of the bird and put it into the other side of the drumstick. Right here. Like this. We're not gonna tie it tight. We're gonna keep it loose. We'll be tightening it right after we attach this, but we're going to be attaching it like this with our zappa gap. And then we'll tighten it up. That's just kind of a dry run of what we're going to be doing. So I bring my string down a little bit and just let it hang on the drumstick bone. Take some zappa gap. I'm just putting this in a, a spray can lid. Put a little bit in there so I can brush out what I need. These are just throwaway acid brushes. We get some of the Zappa Gap on that brush and we're just going to paint that onto the clay right where the drumstick meets the leg, where the uh, tarsus meets the tibia. You want to make sure you have adequate coverage. It's not going to cure out instantly now, but as soon as that skin touches it, which is slightly moist, then it's going to automatically cure out. So you want to get it right where you want it, right to start. So we're going to bring our skin up, make sure we have the proper alignment, bring it around, push it into place, tighten our string off. And then I'm just going around and making sure it is tightly in everywhere. If you get a spot where it's starting to come up a little bit, you can take a little bit more of your Zappa Gap and just put it in there and then push it back in. But we are good with that. You wanna get rid of this brush now away from you because it's gonna to start to smoke as that Zappa Gap cures out on these bristles and it can uh, be irritating to your eyes. So I normally just throw it away, get it out of your work area. Make sure this Zappa Gap does not get on any of the feathers, keep that away. Now we'll start to sew it up. And we're going to sew up all the way along the drumstick and then directly to the center of the bird. And then we'll come down and do our other leg and repeat the same process to the center. I'm just going to bring the rest of my drumstick skin up and around to make sure it's going to fit correctly. Kind of get it aligned before I start to sew it. You want to avoid catching feathers in here if you can. This is not an area you're going to be seeing on a full strut bird, but if this was a standing bird or a gobbling bird, you would see more of this. You want to get into the habit of making it neat. So if you remember, we didn't put a lot of clay here. We kept it fairly lean. You can see how that skin went around there nicely, but there was no extra skin. You don't want to ever make it too thick here when you're rebuilding your drumstick. Keep this lean. Just catching it underneath the skin. You don't need a fancy stitch for this. It's just under and under. The hardest part of doing this is just making sure you're not catching feathers in. Okay, we're moving to the 
bottom of the drumstick and we are starting to sew up on the rest of our seam. Because we case skinned it, we don't have a big seam to deal with here. So you're not going to be sewing that terribly long. Just as a little side note, if you are working on a turkey that was originally breasted instead of case skinned, you may want to consider sewing up that uh, breast incision while the bird is still wet. Like when you're doing your wet sizing, it's a little easier to do it than trying to work through the breast feathers now. We're just working towards the center. Again, you're just, you're sewing through these feathers. It can be a little hard to see where you're going. But just take your time and get a good tight seam. You don't want this pulling away on you. Some people pin the seam here and that's fine to do too, especially if it's tearing on you, if there's a lot of damage, but I like to have it where you can manipulate the skin back and forward, especially forward. So I'm not a big fan of pinning. I think you're better off to have that ability to move the skin around that form during the process. Okay, now we're just gonna do a couple of uh, tie off knots and cinch that in. We sewed up just a little bit past the center point. Now we will repeat the same process on this leg and finish off our seam to here. Now that we have both drumsticks completely sewn up and our seam finished sewn up, we're gonna grab onto the bird by the drumsticks, lift it up off the bench, and we're just gonna shake it. You wanna shake it for about 30 seconds. What that's doing is that's realigning all the feathers. Turkeys do this out in the wild all the time, especially after they give themselves a dust bath. It realigns everything. So we're just mimicking what they do to realign their feathers. It also shakes off any dry preserve that might have got inside of the feathers. Now we're going to put the turkey back on the temporary base. We just put our spacer blocks back in and then we'll tighten it down with our nuts and our washers.